So welcome. Uh, my name is Dr. Aaron Brennan. I'm an assistant professor at Drexel's College of Medicine in the Department of Psychiatry. I've been really fortunate over these uh, last uh, couple months uh, to partner with uh, PEAK, which is at the University of Pennsylvania, um, in um, uh, in developing this series of, of webinars, um, they've been really supportive. Uh, people from all over the country have been really supportive in uh, the series of webinars. The topic for today, this missing of milestones, um, is <coughs> uh, came from you guys. Uh, this is obviously going to be um, somewhat of a theoretical, just a, as a way of maybe thinking about it and wrapping our heads around it, because nobody's ever done we really haven't done research on on missing milestones due to covid because everybody's missing their milestones right now and so uh these major life events but um what we're really going to do is lean back and think about it in the context of cognitive therapy and so really today is about um reinforcing that idea of we're not here in therapy to do stuff for our individuals or to our individuals, it's really about making sure that they're constantly in the state of learning new lessons about themselves, others, and the world, right? So at the core of cognitive therapy, it's not about skills, it's not about other things, it's about shifting your perspective. However you get that done um, is, is helpful along the way. Um, as always, um, this is um, a webinar. It's hopefully really informational. Uh, I'll be very interested if people try out some of these things to uh, let me know um, how they, you know, how they work and, and pieces like this. Um, some of the first episode teams that I supervise have, have started, you know, some of this work. So this comes from some of the supervisions I've been fortunate to participate in. So the purpose of today is really we're going to sort of define and talk about some of the milestones that are being missed. And um, I came up with a list by all means. There's absolutely no way that these are exhaustive. Thinking about their impact on the individuals that we serve um, and then developing some ways of, 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 of intervening on those um, and then really thinking about at the end this idea of guided discovery and, and how we help somebody um draw new conclusions about themselves right because one of the best parts about milestones is it's really that capstone on many of the interventions that we've been doing so for example i know uh, a bunch of the teams that are on right now there's a lot of kiddos that they were working with who let's say they worked with that individual to get a job and now all of a sudden, maybe their job, they don't get the job or go off to college, right? And then now they don't get to go off to college or they have to return home from college. And so there's lots of these ways that we work and that capstone can be lost in, in, uh, due to the isolation and pieces like that. Um, but it doesn't mean that we have to lose that learning opportunity. So thinking about what are some of the milestones, right? Um, so what is a milestone, right? Uh, I looked it up, I did a, you know, thank goodness for Google, I just Googled it. An action or event marking a significant change or stage in development, right? So this is what we're gonna be talking about. So a lot of things fall under milestones. Birthdays, right? I had a birthday, my son had his birthday during, the, during COVID. Um, and I know, you know, we're gonna talk about this idea over and over again, that some of these can seem really stupid. Like it's a birthday, so what, right? Um, I'm a grown adult, uh, I'm a dad, and I, you know, I've had a lot of birthdays now. This isn't my like 12th birthday, I had a lot of birthdays. And somebody might say, who cares? But for some people, it can be difficult, right? It can be upsetting, it can be uh, a bummer. Graduations and proms, right? Graduations, I think a lot of people feel badly about, but some people go, so what? It's prom, how big of a deal is it? But you know what? Prom is something that a lot of people do, right? And uh, you know, I even was joking with some of my friends, even if you didn't go to your prom, you always had the story of why you didn't go to your prom or why proms are dumb. And so it was in your control and it was something that you got to do. And so graduation proms, I mean, I think those, you know, those are things that people are missing. Um, births and pregnancy. Um, I know of uh, a bunch of colleagues um, uh, who are pregnant and, you know, the process of being pregnant is a, 
there's a lot of pieces that are really small. Um, things like, obviously, there's showers, there's ultrasounds, there's the first ultrasound. You know, I was really fortunate, you know, when we had our kids, I got to sit there with my wife during her first ultrasound. Uh, one of my colleagues, um, there, you know, uh, her husband is FaceTiming in during the ultrasound. One of my cousins, uh, they were you know, uh, the husband wasn't allowed in and he, he, I think he FaceTimed for it, or maybe he was allowed in, but he couldn't go to all of the checkups leading up to it. And so it's a really, you know, uh, these are things that, that, that we build up over many years. And I think some of the people may be like, which are my kid, which of my individuals are going to be pregnant? They could be, you know, but it's something to think about, or, you know, um, a lot of individuals draw a huge amount of, of, pride and success um, and experiences as their families um, go through these things, right? So if my sister is pregnant, you know, if I can't do some of the things that might go along uh, that as well, and not being able to go see, say, a brand new niece or nephew. Funerals, right? Um, I know of a lot of people who uh, can't bury their loved ones, can't attend those funerals, or have to make the decision of which of the, you know, which of the five people can be uh, at their funeral. Um, my daughter this weekend, this isn't a funeral, but my daughter this weekend attended a bat mitzvah and nobody could attend the bat mitzvah. So this girl was in a synagogue uh, alone um, with the rabbi and I think just the immediate family. And then everybody else was zooming in, you know, and I've, this is happening sort of all over the country. You know, and I'm sure this is true of things like christenings and baptisms and, you know, all of these, these, these events that happen in our lives. And they're all having to change and they're, they're very different. Um, employment, retirement, people retire, you know. Um, even if you hated your job, you know, there's the process of retiring. You know, people are getting new jobs. People are leaving the universities that they're at and moving to a new university. Right? There's all of these different ways um, that there are changes, and they're all disrupted by, uh, by this COVID experience. Uh, moving, getting your own apartment, you know, these are all different things that, that are just milestones, and they're really different. Um, even uh, things like playoffs, you know, some of the, our individuals play sports, and you know, maybe it's their last, you know, especially thinking about some of the young folks. You know, what if there's a young individual who they struggle with all these different things, but uh, their, their ability to play sports is really uh, something that, that, that's a strong point for them. You know, a lot of people are not getting to play in their senior match. You know, they're not able to um, uh, be on the swim team, you know, and, and thinking outside of the individuals we serve, you know, there are individuals who've trained their whole lives to go to the Olympics and those things are gone. And we could say, is it really that important in the middle of all of this global pandemic? No, but for the individual, it's important. So that gets to our idea of sort of, so what, right? It's a birthday, so what? And so um, one of the things that we can start to think of are, you know, a lot of people have asked me, aren't there more um, important concerns out there than this, right? Um, and the answer here is absolutely, right? Um, there are definitely more important things than celebrating birthdays, right? Um, these, this is a mixture of my son's birthday celebration and my birthday celebration. And that is true. I turned 404. So I drink a lot of water. That's my trick. Um, yet for the person, when we're thinking about all of these milestones, it's a real loss, right? And I'll be honest, just to sort of share my own experience. And I felt really, really stupid. Um, when it was happening. But for me, um, on my birthday, my younger brother was supposed to come down with my niece and nephew and, and celebrate with me. And I was fine. Like I said, I'm a grown adult. And yet there was a part of me that was sad. And then, you know, you know, last week when my son, this is the way that he got to celebrate his birthday. Right, his friends all drove by and uh, did a drive-by, did a, a, a car line celebration. Um, and he didn't get to see his friends. And, and I think that there's a toll, I think there's, there's a loss for the individual. 
So could I have said to him, come on, buddy, man, there's people dying in New York City. Is this really that important? He'd probably say no. But you know what? Um, I'm not treating COVID-19. I'm treating, you know, um, I'm treating the individual that I'm seeing. And so there's a lot of beliefs that can be, um, you know, when an individual experiences this loss, there's a lot of these beliefs that can get really, that really can get primed in the individuals that we're seeing, right? So there's the defeatist beliefs. Why try? Things aren't going to work out anyway, right? And so, you know, this is a really, this is really good evidence. You know, let's say I work really hard. I get through school. I go, see, so why try? Nothing works out anyway, right? It really reinforces that idea. I'm even thinking about some of the people on this call um, are from hospitals, right? So many of the people think about it. If I finally get discharged, I do all this really hard work and I get discharged and nobody can come and see me. It really might reinforce that idea of, look, I did all this work, so why try? And, and to, anyway, nothing's going to work out anyway. Um, time with other people isn't worth it, right? So other people don't care about me, right? Um, you know, all, I, all that ends up happening is a bunch of people get on a Zoom and wish me a happy birthday. So who cares, right? So time with other people isn't worth it. But these beliefs are going to prime uh, a lot of the negative symptoms, those problems with motivation and those problems with connection. So in this whole process, individuals can personalize the, the lack of celebration of their milestones as it's about me, right? There, there's a part about me that this is happening. Um, and it can be really, really upsetting. It can be really, uh, it can make somebody really sad. So the, the, the first thing that we're going to talk about doing is, um, and I think it's probably one of the most important interventions that you're going to do uh, when it comes to milestones. And it might seem like a no-brainer, and I bet everybody on this, on this video, um, on this webinar this morning is going, of course we would do that. Great. I would say make sure you do it and make sure you do it really, really, really well. And so the first step is, is this idea of validation, right? Um, in the treatment, this individual it, that we're serving is our focus, not society, not COVID. So we, so I would tell you and anybody that you supervise, if somebody's saying, sure, it's a birthday, sure, you don't get to do playoffs, right? Um, that that clinician is missing who their patient is, essentially, who their client is. You have the wrong client. If you're sitting there and saying you need to understand that there's a pandemic going on, then we're treating society and COVID-19. We're not treating the individual in front of us. So as small as it might be, it might be the most insignificant milestone, but it means something to that individual. And so what we want to do is focus in on validating and doing a really good job. And please recognize that the individual might feel really silly or selfish in doing that. I'll be honest, when my brother couldn't come down for my birthday and I got like really upset, like I just kept finding that it choked me up, I would become really sort of overwhelmed. Um, I felt so stupid. I felt like the most selfish, childish person in the world. Here there were, this was right, you know, my birthday was March 26th. New York was exploding with cases. And I was upset that I couldn't take my niece and nephew to the zoo. Um, and I felt like an absolute child. And um, I actually was very lucky because my brother was very sweet and he was really validating. And he goes, yeah, this sucks. This is the worst, right? So validate the loss and validate their sadness and help them with the grieving process. If I can't be in the room as my brother or sister um, is hearing the heartbeat for the first time of, of, the, of the baby, or if I can't go and visit that, th that person, or if I can't play in my playoff game, or if I can't go to the prom, or if I can't choose not to go to the prom, right? All of these things, there's a process of grieving that. It's a real loss that the individual is experiencing. Make sure that they, that they say that and really spend time. Let them express it. Have them talk through what's the hardest part about it. And if they're like, it's nothing, it's stupid, go. You can even say, yeah, it probably is stupid, but it's bothering you, so walk me through it. Um, and let them know that you get that it's hard, right? This is really hard, man. 
Um, and even set, letting them know, listen, I get it. If you're feeling silly, we all feel silly about these things. If you're comfortable, if this is the way you practice, you can even share with them. You know, I've shared with a lot of my individuals um, about my birthday. Um, and they, 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 feel, um, they feel more normal um, in that their, their distress or their sadness isn't a, a sign that they're, that they're weird or ill or, or broken. Um, and so they, they, feel, they feel, like I said, they just feel validated in that. Um, and letting them know, I know you might feel silly, but this is a real bummer, right? This stinks. This isn't, nobody's enjoying this. And let them, let them, you know, let them vent, let them talk about their sadness and just keep reflecting back. Yeah, this has got to be hard. Um, really taking that time to validate their experience can be, is really um, valuable in that it can prepare us to start thinking about other stuff. We're not going to just leave it at, yeah, this is terrible and nothing good can come of it but make sure that you take your time to validate the experience that the individual is having. And then once we validate it, make sure that they celebrate. This might be one of my favorite, uh, I've had a couple of really favorite um, uh, pictures that I found. I'm, I'm not unhappy with this one. So again, spending time eliciting the uh, spending time validating because here's the problem if you go yeah that's got to be hard so how are you going to party the individual is going to go you're not hearing that it's hard so you really want to validate until you get that they get that you get it and then elicit the plans to celebrate so even though we don't get the birthday party that we wanted to have you know um i had one person that i was served turned 21 and in fact we had been talking about this individual turning 21 as long as we've been working together. Um, and all of a sudden, their, you know, their 21st birthday was um, at home with their parent. That's not super fun, right? And even the parents didn't have a lot, anything, like not that I wanted this patient to, you know, this individual to go out and get really drunk, but I think they were looking forward to going and having a margarita, you know, at a restaurant um and chips and salsa at the same time you can get behind that or even if they wanted to go out and be a little stupid for the 21st birthday so listen what are the how are you going to celebrate what is your celebration going to look like and if they start downplaying it going well really let me know what what's it going to be um acknowledging it's probably not going to be the same as they thought it was going to be um but they still might be able to celebrate anyway so if we get really set in, it was supposed to be this way, then we don't have the opportunity to look at what we might do. So acknowledging again, this, this is going to bring up more of that, that frustration. You know, I was supposed to go out to the Mexican restaurant where everybody goes and has their margaritas for the first time and then going, okay, yeah, you know, that's a real bummer that I know you're not going to be do it. What can you do? right? And start looking at what can you do as a part of it. There are driveway parties, right? In the picture of the birthdays uh, that, that, that I did, um, there's, um, you know, we set up a driveway party where we measured out six feet and everybody had their spot and they stayed in their spot. We were able to do a driveway party and it was fun. You know, everybody brought their, you know, their snacks and stuff like that. And we all set up in the driveway um, so, and I've heard that, I've heard some driveway parties for things like proms, um, even some graduation celebration, things like that. Uh, car parades, right? Uh, it has gotten to the point, I don't know if anybody else on the, on the uh, webinar, raise your hand if you have. Anybody actually have a car parade kit? I've seen a lot of, we have a car parade ki kit now. So if somebody's having a birthday party, um, we don't have to like go scrambling around the house to find what it is. I've see, also seen more cars with blue tape on them, like the blue painter's tape. So that way they can, um, you know, because they're, they've done so many of these car parades, right? But there are car parades and that's a way that we can celebrate. Zoom celebrations, obviously that's, it's really weird that Zoom celebrations are sort of like the old school celebration for things like birthdays, um, holidays even. Um, we've done some of that um, in that way. Um, so in generating these ideas, um, making sure the individuals that we validate that it's not the same, 
but it can, um, but it can be good. It might even be as good. They might even have people attend their graduation or their birthday party or um, uh, their event who couldn't have done it otherwise, right? So somebody might um, uh, join their bar bat mitzvah that wouldn't have been able to join otherwise, right? Um, so there, there, there's actually a little bit of a flexibility around it um, as well. And so seeing um, what are they gonna do uh, in these ways, right? It isn't the same, but it could be just as good. Um, and it might even be a little bit different. Um, the other, so this brings us to the next thing we want to keep our eyes open for. And I, I kind of coined this stupid phrase, celebratory hopelessness. Um, it really comes from this all or nothing thinking, you know, many individuals that we serve, uh, or just listen, this is a very common, um, cognitive distortion. A lot of people can have this idea of, well, if I can't have the, a real prom, then there's no point in doing it all. If I can't have a real graduation, then there's no point in celebrating it all. And so what people do is they avoid the celebration that's available to them. But what they conclude was there was no point in doing any of these things because nothing ever works out anyway. And so as we start paying attention to that, again, we start with, I know this is, I sound like a broken record. We validate that going, of course, you don't want to have, of course, you didn't go to college for all these years to, to um, have everybody celebrate through, um, through Zoom right? And, or celebrate by driving by in their car. Um, of course, you didn't want to have that happen. That wasn't what you had in mind. Um, and if you don't do it, what's that going to be like? So playing out the idea that they're not going to do that. The intervention is really helping people notice that maybe 25% of a good celebration is better than 100% um, or 0% or of what they expected, right? Or 25% of good is better than 100% of nothing. And so letting them see that. And even getting with the family a little bit and going like, listen, I know he's saying he doesn't want the Zoom, but set up the Zoom anyway. Worst case scenario, it's two seconds and he says no. Um, and we've done that with some of, the, some, of the, um, some of my family members who were getting really bummed out. And they're like, well, I don't want any of it. You know, we just said, we, we, we set it up anyway, and they were thrilled. Because again, once the celebration is over, you kind of aren't going to be able to go back and, you know, some of the celebrations you aren't going to be able to go back and get. Um, the other thing that, that, that we might help people start noticing is this, um, is going on social media. It's very weird. The one thing COVID has brought to me is that social media has become a much better um, it, it, it's provided this wonderful medium. And so if people go on things like Instagram, Facebook, um, a lot of these different, I mean, even Pinterest and looking at, you know, graduations, looking at birthdays, looking at, um, uh, you know, uh, even, you know, um, uh, you know, birth showers and stuff like that. All of these things, um, you can see two things if you go to social media. One, come up with lots of really good ideas. Um, and I have to say from my birthday to my son's birthday, the, um, the skill at these types of celebrations of birthdays had gone up you know, astronomically. The other thing that the individual can start seeing is lots of people are having to celebrate in this way. So it isn't that the individual has failed. It isn't that the individual is failing to have their, this experience. Many people are, having, uh, are losing these experiences along the way as well. And so helping them start recognizing that, you know, many people are enjoying a little bit of a celebration and many people are having to change the way they celebrate uh, their big uh, accomplishments. So, um, that brings us to the next part that we're going to start focusing in on, right? We, we're going to, as we validate, as we plan the, 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 as we develop the plan for a celebration, we're going to help the individual start focusing in on their accomplishment, right? Um, we really want to bring the person back to, you know, what was going to be good about going to college, right? Um, finding out why they pursued that or why they went to go get a job or why they wanted to get their own apartment. 
And so while they're not going to be able to have, say, their whole family over to have a first dinner when they get back, they still might have accomplished those things. What was going to be good about being discharged? And really helping the individual to, um, to focus, start shifting their focus from what they're losing to why they chose to pursue this milestone uh, altogether. So why did you go to school, right? Um, why did a person go out for the team? So finding out, you know, uh, for somebody who's missing their playoffs or missing their final season of, of competing. Um, for a person who's becoming a parent during this time, you know, why did you become a parent? Um, it wasn't to have everybody come over and, you know, throw you a shower. There were other reasons, hopefully, the person became a parent. Um, why did you want to have this big birthday party? You know, what were you hoping for out of the big birthday party? Um, so the question then, once we really start exploring and enriching why they originally pursued this, this milestone, uh, what, or what becomes this milestone, we can start asking, well, was it for the party or was it for something else? Um, and then finding out, did the individual get those benefits, even if they didn't get the celebration at the end? Um, and can they also savor it? So I'm curious, what was going to be good about going to college, right? Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh, I like that too. Hmm, I never even thought about that. Well, that's a cool thing as well. Wow, all those reasons to go to college. Did you get to do all of those things? Huh. So even if we don't get to have a big party at the end, did you still get all of these things? Hmm. It is still a bummer that we don't get that big party. I wonder if there's another way that we can celebrate. Just a nice simple way of making it real concrete in front of the individual um, and then making sure that they, um, and it's still validating that they didn't get those things that they wanted but helping them see all of the things that they did accomplish, right? Because there is this piece of it where kind of the football got pulled, pulled away from their feet right at the end. Um, and the more, I mean, I know I keep coming back to this idea of the more we're able to make sure that a person has that validated, we can look at all these other things that they wanted to do, right? So they, maybe they made a lot of friends. Maybe they learned a lot about what they wanted to learn. Maybe they, Maybe they learn that when they're busier that they, that they don't have time to worry, right? Um, maybe they felt really accomplished. Maybe their parents felt so proud of them. And they did get all of those things. They just don't get the big party at the end. Um, also, I know of a lot of people who um, are just planning their parties for later. You know, that's, that's another piece of it. So that brings us to um, the, the, the next part of it, which is really about this idea of drawing the conclusions, right? Making sure that we're helping individuals draw their conclusions uh, at the end of these experiences, right? Um, so whatever the milestone they're striking is, it's a success, right? It's a success that they had, right? And so we really wanna help people start to recognize and ask the question of, you know, what does it mean about, you know, there's always that question, what does that mean about you that you were able to graduate from college? What does that mean about you that you had a birthday party that had to be canceled or that you um, weren't able to go to your prom, right? And it's interesting because in order to not go to a prom, you need to have been going to the prom to begin with. And so helping individuals start seeing themselves as, you know, capable or competent or likable, right? If, if I had a, this big plan to go out for my, for my birthday, um, that means that there were a lot of people who liked me. If I got through all of college, that means that I'm competent. And especially if it's an individual that we serve and they got through college or they got through high school, um, they were successful even in the midst of all of the experiences that they may have been having, right? So they may have had um, you know, incidents of being hospitalized during college. They may have had incidents of symptoms getting worse. And so while, you know, student A graduates and is successful, 
the individual that we're serving was successful and had all of these things that they were able to overcome and making sure that they see that. What does that mean? It means that you're actually really competent and you're able to succeed at these things. The lessons they can start learning about the world is really that we're all in this together, right? So this idea that um, I'm missing my birthday and other people are missing their birthdays. Um, so many people are missing their graduations um, that they are, um, uh, that people, you know, famous celebrities are putting on virtual um, uh, commencement speeches. Uh, I know that at uh, where I live, um, I'm in the North Penn School District in Pennsylvania. Um, they're doing graduation for the high school seniors um, over three or four days. And so your family can come to the school. And uh, I think you have a 15 minute or a half hour slot. No, it must be 15 minute slot where your whole family files in, sits down, you walk up, you get a socially distanced um, uh, diploma and your family can take all the pictures they want and cheer and then you leave. Um, and so, but I think there's like 1500 kids in the, in the graduating class. So they're doing it for like eight, nine hours a day, uh, all, you know, for, for three days straight, which is, I thought was really impressive. Um, then we get into, you know, uh, beliefs about the future, right? Um, so, um, oh, that's really interesting. Uh, somebody has, uh, given an example about, uh, that their high school is allowing people to drive around the Pocono tr racetrack. So there's lots of creative things that people are doing. I think the other thing that milestones allow us to see is if I was able to accomplish this, what can I accomplish about the future? And so there's a wonderful way of saying, if you were able to do this and you didn't think you were able to do this at the beginning, what's the future going to look like? Um, the, last, the last sort of cognitive restructuring is my favorite. It's my favorite because it's a little naughty. Um, in the, and when I say naughty, I mean, it's a little... Um, I guess naughty is the only word. It, it always just feels like a, a little impish for me. Um, and it's a great way from, I've always found it's a great way when things don't go well um, and don't go the way an individual desires. And, um, but it's the same as the problem that other people have. Um, it's a great way of saying, so you didn't get to go to your graduation. So what does that mean about you? And they come up with all these things and then you might go, it sounds like you're normal. It sounds like you're about as normal as every other person, you know, or at least, I don't know, all of the country. And, and there's this kind of like very weird backhanded way that we start going. Um, so what does it mean that nobody was able to come over for your birthday? And then, um, you know, they might come up with these different things or maybe they're sort of, um, if we've done some of these earlier interventions, they're at a point where they're going, well, you know, it happens and stuff like that, right? So what does that mean about you? I guess it means that you're like normal. You're like super normal, like boring normal. That's a nice thing, right? Did you ever think that you'd be exactly like everybody else? And so there's this great way because a lot of the individuals that we serve see themselves as broken or aberrant or different than other people. And this is a great example. It's a great, horrible example that we're all sort of in it together and we kind of, you're just like every other person. Um, especially if you've set this, that, that conclusion up through all of the validation, developing the celebrations, getting them to celebrate anyway you know, helping them notice their accomplishments. This is a great way at the end um, that they can, can draw that conclusion that, that they are as normal as everybody else. Uh, so to summarize um, about the milestones, um, really making sure that, that we keep driving home with the individuals that we serve, that we're in a really weird time, right? Things are just bizarre. There's, there's no good way around it. So everything's changing and unfortunately the milestones are uh something that are that are being are are taking a big hit 
um, validate the loss and focus on the individual's, you know, sadness around it. Um, there's all of these different pieces that, um, that I think, you know, my wife and I, when we walk, we really think about every time we hear about a different milestone, um, we, we acknowledge how, how sort of frivolous or unimportant some of them are. And yet the, the way it strikes somebody personally is really difficult, right? Um, I'll tell you, my son was really sad that he wasn't going to be able to have a birthday party with his friends. You know, um, could I have said, hey, buddy, buck it up. Like that's, that happens. Um, you know, everybody's doing it. I could have, but he was just sad, you know. Um, same thing for graduation and prom and all of these things, right? So validating their 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 loss and focusing on on the individual and then help the individual develop a way of celebrating um and have them um you know helping them to also focus in on their uniqueness listen when they have grandkids you know they're you know i think our whole generation was worried you know our generation and our the generation after us was all worried that you know everybody from the depression era was going to be the last group to have this you know these stories and these are all stories that we're going to have. So develop a celebration, figure out how do you make it unique. Um, after we've done a lot of that validation and making sure that we're celebrating, refocusing the individual on the accomplishment. So now we're moving it away from what they've lost to what they've actually accomplished and done. And so really making sure that they're savoring that accomplishment. Um, and then helping them to draw the conclusions about the meaning of the milestones and the meaning of what they've accomplished. So, um, oh, it's not going to be Monday. It's going to be Friday. Uh, we're going to do hygiene and grooming. It's everybody's favorite conversation. Um, I promise that by the time we end hygiene and grooming, none of you guys will like me unless you've heard my talk on hygiene and grooming before. And then you'll be like, oh, that's just Aaron. Um, but we're going to talk about hygiene and grooming on Friday. It's sort of a neat little um, specialty uh, that we can talk about. Um, uh, everything will be listed. I'm going to try to get the webinars up um, as fast as possible. Um, and with that, um, it's nice to be uh, ahead of the curve for once versus behind the curve. So uh, does anybody have any questions? Anybody have any questions or, or ideas or thoughts or reactions? I was that comprehensive. Are people on the on this video? Are you guys struggling with the fact that your your individuals are hitting their um, these milestones? They're not, so your individuals really aren't. Okay. So birthdays, graduations, births, stuff like that. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I know people are definitely going to be struggling financially right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So high school seniors. So which part of it are they struggling with the most? The graduation piece of it. Okay. Um, yeah, that's very cool. So yeah, the college things are, is a, is a real doozy. Um, and I've worked with people who have gotten like accepted to school and stuff like that. Um, getting a job, getting a driver's permit. Ooh, I don't even know how you would get, how you would get the driver's permit. And that's such a bummer. I, I mean, that, that's the one that I, you know, uh, kid, I didn't even think about that one because I remember when I got my driver's license, you know, uh, um, I went and I got my photos done. Um, so, okay, very cool. Gender reveal, uh, getting a job, getting a driver's permit. You know, those are all things that we celebrate together. But isn't it, I mean, but do, it does it seem reasonable that idea of like, yeah, it feels really frivolous and stupid. And yet, you know, I remember when I got my driver's license, my mom laughed at me because I got my haircut. Uh, I went and I scheduled a haircut so that way I could go get the photo taken for my driver's license so I could drive to get my, my in, so I had a good photograph for my first driver's license. And then I showed up to I showed up to high school and in and, and 
you know, I got to drive because they let me use the car the day that I got my driver's license. So it seems frivolous, but at the same time, it's kind of exciting. Um, so, um, Molly, is it more of the graduation party or is it more of just not being able to walk? And it's, it's more of not being able to walk. It's more of having that experience. Okay. Are there schools, are there schools ch trying to come up with like a version of it? You know, I'm not positive on that. None of the clients that I work with have anything implemented from their school right now. Okay. Oof. Um, that's where I think the validation is going to be really strong. Um, because I, I think, you know, um, it's really interesting. Early on in my work with co in cognitive therapy and training people to do cognitive therapy, one of the things that really struck me, uh, especially once I turned from being just like a person who knew cognitive therapy to doing cognitive therapy, is um, that there's actually two routes when we think of cognitive therapy, right? So obviously, they're sort of shifting our behaviors or our, or our beliefs or our, our cognitions, our thoughts about a situation, so that way we're less distressed. Um, but then the other part of it is when there's a real problem, we solve the real problem. And so it's not denying that problems exist. And so um, I think for a lot of this, it's, you know, some of the stuff that's going to be um, just really acknowledging that this is a problem. This is, a, this is not cool. Um, and then seeing how do we have those, um, those celebrations and recognizing that this is not what they signed up for when they said, I'm going to do all this hard work to manage my voices so I could go and, and graduate. This isn't what they signed up for. Um, and then also, what does it mean about you that you're able to move through this and have, and have this other experience? So I'll be interested to hear how people react moving forward, you know, as, you, as we help our young folks. I mean, we're right in the midst of prom, graduation, you know, all that stuff, senior dinners, you know, um, all that stuff. So uh, as this stuff comes up, I'll be more interested in it. Uh, well, I hope to see everybody Friday for hygiene and grooming. Um, and other than that, I will see you guys uh, around. Please be well and be safe. And uh, thank you for joining me on this Monday. Bye.